hello, everyone. Uh, first, I'd like to thank the Fulbright Commission for giving me this chance to share my, uh, my work. Uh, I'm Ola Mohamed Bouma, Professor of Microbial Biotechnology at the Egyptian Atomic Energy Authority here in Cairo. Uh, I've been to the University of South Carolina. My work is engineered nanoparticle bioaccumulation from aqueous media by stress-induced fungi as means for biofiltration. Th this is where I've been, so it's Arnold School of Public Health, Department of Environmental Health Sciences. Um, at the lab of uh, associate professor Anandi Chanda. And the uh, lab focuses on the uh, interaction between contaminants and human. Uh, we explore different aspects of the contamination using multidisciplinary approaches. I will not get into the definition of nanoparticles, already uh, said that, but um, needless to say that the, uh, the characteristics of nanoparticles give us um, so many uh, aspects and applications. And this, the same um, uh, aspects are the things that I'm going to talk about right now. So uh, different types of nanoparticles uh, can be quantum dots, uh, uh, metals, uh, polymers, uh, whatever, and they have different applications. But uh, as beneficial as the nanoparticles, no one um, or it's a limited amount of research is done on the potential toxicity effects of nanoparticles. So what has been recorded so far is damage for the liver, kidney, DNA, skin, and this is the downside of using, um, uh, of being exposed, accidentally exposed to nanoparticles or uh, unintentional exposure of nanoparticles. As we can see, um, according to Scopus database just last month, the number of publications on nanoparticles exceeded 12,000 publications so far uh, for nanoparticle synthesis, while on the other hand, the nanoparticle toxicity just exceeded 3,000. This shows the knowledge gap between nanoparticle synthesis and nanoparticle toxicity. So for my work, I uh, used um, nanoparticles, so it was silver PVP, um, and um, we um, imitated like a synthetic wastewater containing the silver nanoparticles, and we tried to remove it using Aspergillus niger. Uh, this is a fungi common. It's uh, isolated from soil. Uh, it's generally regarded as safe and uh, usually used in uh, treating um, or removing, used in bioremediation, so removing metals and other aspects of bioremediation. Uh, we grew the Niger in specific media, um, specific for producing exopolysaccharides, which is the main aspect or the main uh, compound we thought is going to capture the nanoparticles from the aqueous media. We formed it into pellets using uh, uh, agitation. Uh, so a pellet is like a fungi, uh, it's mycelia wrapped in a, uh, like a cotton wall, um, uh, ball, sorry, and uh, it has a surface area that can entrap the nanoparticles within the, uh, within the uh, nanoparticles. So the question was, um, can we really remove nanoparticles from the uh, aqueous media using uh, um, a microorganism, which is usually nanoparticles kill the microorganism. So can we really do that? Which part of the cell is responsible for this? Um, is it really the exopolysaccharides that can entrap it? And if so, can we induce stress and increase the, uh, the removal? We use concavalent A conjugate, uh, which binds to the EPS to quantify the uh, exopolysaccharides and locate its, uh, its place. So after optimizing conditions and after using, um, we use the plasma surface resonance to quantify the remaining uh, nanoparticles. We use the uh, zeta potential also to detect the size. And we concluded that we have the, the, indeed the cells are responsible for removal of the majority of the nanoparticles in the aqueous media. And the, it's not very evident, but the, this is the fluorescent microscopy. So we see the uh, dots, the red dots, are the exopolysaccharides uh, within the mycelia. We expose the cells to ethanol as a mode of stress. Um, we use uh, different types, but there's no time to, uh, to look at that. So we use dead cells, live cells, cells exposed to calcium chloride, cells exposed to ethanol. And uh, by stress, we increase the exopolysaccharides in the media, and then we obtained higher removal even for the nanoparticles from the aqueous media. Uh, we also, through the zero potential, we found that uh, sorry, dynamic light scattering, we had the EPS combining with the nanoparticles, it increased the size. And so when it increases the size, it makes the filtration process easier uh, because it gets trapped easier. Another aspect of the study was studying the toxicity effect of the nanoparticles on the uh, Aspergillus niger. And uh, the first thing that we noticed that the reactive oxygen species has increased upon exposure. Uh, this is the first signaling process of uh, cell dysfunction. Um, although the cells were living, so the fungi was living, but then the reactive oxygen species increased. The exopolysaccharides produced in the media decreased. 
the uh, exopolysaccharides released uh, uh, on the surface of the myce mycelia increased. Um, the uh, protein carbohydrate ratio of the exopolysaccharide has changed upon exposure. So this means that the cells, despite them being living cells, the physiological characteristics of the cell has changed dramatically inside. Um, we see the confocal images. So the first, the first one is the uh, green fluorescence. So this is the, this is the the Niger, and then this is uh, by exposure to stress, and then this is the exopolysaccharide has increased dramatically upon exposure to nanoparticles. So the outcome of the fellowship, we have a draft for submission soon for in frontiers in biotechnology and bioengineering. We have a concept note for uh, collaboration to study the oxidative stress response uh, of nanoparticles on microbial cells. And we have invitations for my students to apply for fellowships. Thank you.